Hello there, welcome on to this video series on Silent Surf from Wide Blue Sound. My name is Larry Hogg from AK Get To Know and I'm here to deliver this video series for Groove 3 on this amazing plugin. So it's always exciting when you get to work with a plugin which does something which, as far as I know, was previously impossible to do using just one plugin. You may have been able to do this with very, very time consuming, complex automation. But having this very elegant solution of being able to host reverbs and have them trigger separately every time there's a drum here or there's a MIDI note is so powerful. It stops you getting that kind of blooming reverb sound, that wash of reverb, which although sometimes might be kind of the desired effect, a lot of the time can lead to a muddy mix and you get these kind of resonant peaks that are created and it really can clutter up your mix. So having the ability to be able to have your cake and eat it essentially, so have you know a nice reverb sound, but also not have it kind of blooming too much and crossing over all of your drum transients and creating a pillowy effect over the mix. You can actually have those, as I said, triggered independently by either a drum hit or a MIDI note to be able to have real clarity within your mix, but also have a big sound that you get with reverb. Now, this is a pretty simple plugin in terms of how you operate it and the interface. In the first video, we're going to talk about kind of where things are laid out and also how you set it up to work with your reverb plugins. OK, so once you've installed the plugin, it will look like this, although this will be empty because I've already set up some reverbs, but that's fine. All you need to do to get to that first screen is click on this edit page here. Now from in here, you have a plugin manager window. And if you first open it, you won't have that available or you won't have this view because I've already analyzed the plugins. But what you can do is you can rescan all plugins from the start. So just go into options, rescan all plugins, and it will actually go through and scan all of your plugins. Now there's a VST3 mode. There's also an AU host mode you can use as well. Now you can use this AU host mode if you don't have any VST plugins installed and this works well with Logic as well. And if you install a new plugin, so you've got a new reverb and you installed it, you can update the plugin list to show that new effect that you've added in there. Okay, so that's what you want to do first of all is just scan your plugin folder to get your reverbs. And then from here we can choose to show reverbs only. And then it will analyze what it's decided are reverbs. So what I noticed here is that I've got lots of the Valhalla plugins installed and you can see I've got room and shimmer. But if I go and show all, I've got some extra ones here. Like Vintage Verb, which is a reverb. I had a plate, which is a reverb. This Uber mod is more of a chorus effect. And I'm sure there's other reverbs in here as well that it hasn't included in the list. I mean, to be honest, the Valhalla reverbs are kind of my go-to reverbs. But just be aware that if you click show reverbs only and you don't have a reverb you think you've got installed, it's worth just coming back to this list to make sure that you search for it in here and include it in there. Okay, so once we have this, obviously what we can do is we can include this as a reverb. So you see here, I've included those Valhalla reverbs. Let's find them back in the list. As reverb effects, you can see that here. But you can also include things as an effect as well. So let's go to a filter, for example. So let's go to, maybe it'll be, yeah, so Volcano 3 would include that as an effect as well, just as an example. Now, if we close this, you'll see we have those reverbs available to us in our reverb list. Now, in addition to having the reverb selection here, this is a kind of extra channel strip we can add to the reverb. If we come to here and say choose plugin, you'll see that that volcano filter effect is now available as part of our kind of reverb channel strip here. We just take that out again. So that's the reason why I chose that from the effect list here. So we can have that as an effect. And I'm guessing Silencer does some kind of something under the hood to make sure these plugins are compatible and work with it, which is why you have to select them from this list. Okay, so we'll close this down. So hopefully that's clear. So first of all, you scan all your plugins. It says rescan, but if you're doing it for the first time, you can scan them. AU host mode is if you don't have VST3 plugins installed or you want to use them with Logic. Update means you can force Silencer to kind of update and look for new plugins. And that's from the options menu. Show reverbs only will allow you to have Silencer only analyze what's a reverb plugin. So if we click show reverbs only, it's going to allow Silencer to include what it deems as being reverb plugins. But as I said, sometimes it doesn't seem to include all your reverbs. So if that's the case, just untick that and then you can go and manually choose what you want to include as a reverb. And also anything you include as an effect will show up in this list here. We click choose plugin here. Okay, so let's talk about a little bit about the interface. So let's load a reverb up. You can see it now it appears in here. So this is kind of our reverb area. So if we want to refresh that, 
click on here and it'll take us back to this list. So this is what we're kind of met with once we've scanned our reverbs. So anytime we click on a reverb, it will appear here. Come back to the list using this button here. If we want to bypass, we can do that from here as well. So within here, we get the parameters for our reverbs here. We can choose presets, etc. So it's basically the plugin as you would be used to seeing it normally. Now across to the left here is the channel strip, as I said, so reverb at the top. And then we can add in any of the modules that come with the plugin, which we're going to talk about later. And we can click on these to view them or any effects that we've allowed ourselves to use and selected from the list. Yeah, we'll go through that in more detail later. We have a top toolbar up here, which is where we have presets for the plugin. And we also have this trigger and disable option. So another kind of bypass, we're going to talk about that later. Mix control and the reverb level. And then across the right here, we have like a threshold kind of control where we can choose what parts of the signal are going to be triggering the reverb and also a hold control, which we're going to come back to later. Okay, so in this first video, we talked a little bit about what silence is all about. And we've also kind of explained the initial steps to allow you to have your reverbs and your effects visible. So silencer basically allows you to trigger or re-trigger reverb using either transients from drum loops or also MIDI. We're going to come into the MIDI aspect later. And why is that important? Because a side effect of reverb is it will basically kind of bleed into itself. So if you have a kick drum playing in your drum loop, that's going to be triggering the reverb. So if you want to have a big reverb sound, that's going to be overlapping the next snare hit, potentially overlapping the hi-hats, etc. So you get this kind of pillowy effect. You get phase cancellation, you can get resonances. Now, sometimes that's all fine. There's lots of tracks from the 70s that have kind of big reverbs that sound great. So it doesn't necessarily mean all music made before this was available was bad, you know, or had problems. But if you're going for a super precise kind of modern sound, this could be a great technique to use. So what it means is you're able to basically trigger the reverb afresh every time there's either a transient or a MIDI note. So just to finish off, let me actually show you what I mean. So I've got a drum loop here playing just an Apple loop. Okay. So we've got a Valhalla plate playing here. Okay, now if we use the trigger control, you'll see this start to be triggering. So you can hear the difference if we disable this. So the reverb's kind of much more sustaining. You can see that the reverb is now discrete for every drum hit. So the kick's got its own reverb and that's completely muted when the snare kicks in. So that's the kind of results you're going to get by using this plugin. Okay, so now that's covered, we're going to try this out with a couple more reverbs and we're going to have a look at the trigger and the hold controls. So I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.